Hi everyone, thanks for joining um, the webinar today. So as uh, was mentioned, my name is Jade Gebby and I uh, work in the customer su success team. Um, so today we're going to be looking at common customizations and changes in the Bullhorn workflow. Um, so what we'll go through today is to start off with what are workflow icons, what do we mean by those, um, then we'll look at why to change your workflow icons, um, how to change them and also what kind of actions you can turn into a workflow icon because not everything within Bullhorn can become a workflow icon. So I'll touch on some of those, a lot of things can so I won't go through every single one but I'll show you some of the uh, common ones or sometimes the ones that aren't quite known about. So to start off with, what are workflow icons? So internally, you might have another name for them. I've heard them sometimes be called breadcrumbs. You might call them buttons, um, you know, light ups. You might have something completely different as um, the name for these. Um, but for the purposes of today, we'll be calling them workflow icons. And also just so that you know within the documentation as well, which will send you some useful links after the webinar, these are called workflow icons. So essentially they're the, the buttons on the overview of a record uh, where you can see really quickly and really easily what has happened and what has gone on on a record that you're looking at. Um, so these um, workflow icons, they light up when particular actions have been taken, uh, depending on how they've been set up, it will depend on what action has happened. So for example, um, with this screenshot that I've got here, um, set to along is uh, submissions, or if you're kind of in the UK or Europe, you might have that as um, shortlists, you might have it called something else, but this in this case, it's submissions. Uh, and we know here that on this record, uh, there have been nine submissions kind of assigned to it and that have happened um, against it. So where it can be really useful is um, say, for example, you might be working on a particular role that um, someone else has, is also working on. Um, and then when you open that vacancy record, you can see really quickly, oh great, how many submissions have there been? How many interviews have we had for this job already? Alternatively as well, if you're say for example working with a candidate and maybe you haven't contacted them before, maybe they're a new candidate to you, uh, but one of your colleagues works closely with them, you can see really quickly what kind of activity the candidate has had on, on their record and, and has gone through what stages they've gone through already uh, within the uh, recruiting workflow. Um, here and in a moment, I will go to a test system and show you these kind of in action, um, but I've just got here that they either um, allow you to complete an action with them or see, see the stats to do with the icon. So for example, and like I mentioned, I'll show you this um, when I go to my test system in a moment. If we were to click on client submissions, this would take us to actually see those two client submissions. Whereas phone interview, because a phone interview hasn't happened against that record, when we click on that one, it will actually take us to the ad screen. So that's what I mean by either it allows you to complete an action if nothing's happened, to do with that workflow icon already, or um, it lets you see that information already. As I say, I'll show you that in a moment. So often you might be thinking, okay, we have these workflow icons, we already have them set up, but why, why should we change them um, when you first get Bullhorn? There's sort of the standard ones that are set up um, and you might wonder, wonder why, why you might want to um, sort of adjust them. Um, and with the workflow icons, they are highly customizable. So how you work in your company might be completely different to how someone else is works who is also watching this webinar and everyone has their own ways of um, kind of going through the workflow uh, workflow process maybe um, for some people they have a internal interview before they uh, between pre-screening and sending a candidate CV or someone else might have um, that like an interview bef internally 
at a different stage or just a, a specific note you know you might everyone works differently and um, so this allows you to be able to utilize the ability of being able to see that information really clearly but set up in the way that you work um, so I'm just going to take us to the test system um, so looking here and this is um, a test candidate here and you'll notice that there's some workflow icons along the top here now some of these will most likely be um, on your the same as what you have set up maybe not but um, a lot of these ones are kind of the standard workflow icons most likely you probably won't have formatted resumes that's a, a bit more of a, a customized one that we've put in there just um, because I wanted to show you one that was a little bit different um, but the one thing that I would recommend and it is you know up to you and kind of at your discretion of how you set these up because like I mentioned they are customizable um, but with the the workflow icons along the top here apart from the formatted resume the rest of these icons they relate to stages in the workflow steps um, taking out pre-screen just for the moment because that's a note um, but the the rest of these options are to do with the the shortlist um, process these icons relate to columns that are in some of the standard reports within Bullhorn um, so that's just one thing that as well as seeing that information on the report if you leave the workflow icons that are kind of the the standard ones that are there when you first get Bullhorn they will relate to those columns within your um, standard reports things like the recruiting activity report uh, also the jobs activity report as well one thing to bear in mind though if you do decide oh there's a workflow icon that doesn't really relate to what we do we want to remove it which just to let everyone know i will be showing you how to change these in a moment um, all that information is still on your system so say for example if i remove formatted resume the formatted resume which if i click to view files is this file that's been updated with the file type resume if I remove that as a workflow icon that file is still going to be there that information is still on your system you don't lose that information all that happens is you don't see it from that workflow icon along the top here so you have to click into the files to actually view that data um, so that's just one thing to bear in mind that you don't lose any information when you remove something as a workflow icon um, and the other thing which I know I've touched on before but I wanted to kind of show it in action um, but the other thing like I mentioned before is if we click on the workflow icon that has been lit, lit up and is green then it takes us to view the information so in this case it takes us to view the shortlists and we can see those two or if we click on an icon that doesn't have any action against it it will allow you to actually add whatever that action is so in this case if i click on pre-screen and that will take us to the add note page and also a, a really good thing with this as well is it actually updates the note action directly to pre-screen whereas if we go to action and add note you do need to remember to put in pre-screen and if we do that from here and if we put pre-screen in here and put something in here and I'll just save this note. Then you'll notice that pre-screen workflow icon has lit up. So I know I've been talking a lot about sort of why to change them and what they are. So I'll show you how to change the workflow icons now. Um, so to do this, to change your workflow icons, it's in your system settings. So if you just head to menu, admin and system settings, And then when we're in here, if we just type into this section here, the easiest thing to do is to type in workflow and enter all your different system settings that relate to your different entities come up in terms of the system setting to do with the workflow icons. Uh, if anyone's watching this and doesn't have access to the system settings, 
and that would mean that your user type isn't an admin user type. Um, what I would recommend with that is to have a internal conversation with your admin users uh, because they have the ability to change your user type. Um, anyone who is an admin will have access to uh, the system settings and that admin folder. Um, so you'll notice here that there's different all the, the workflow um, system settings end in workflow steps, but you'll notice that there's different ones to do with different types of records. So the good thing to bear in mind is that you can have different um, workflow steps for your different records, different entities. Often what I would recommend and how a lot of people have it set up is with your candidates and your jobs to have um, quite a few of the same workflow icons. Um, you know, with your jobs, you wouldn't want pre-screen and, and formatted resume, but, but you'd probably want to have shortlist all the way to placement on both your, your candidate records and your vacancy records, because that's the kind of information that's really useful to view from both types of records. Um, but if we go back to the system settings and I'll show you with the candidates, I'll talk through sort of the different ways of formatting and, and why some have brackets, some have colons and what's that related to. Um, so like with any system setting or field mappings, when you want to add a new option, you just add a comma, no space and add your next option. Um, You'll notice, as I mentioned before, there's some that, well, there's one that doesn't have square brackets around it and the others do. If you add an option in here that doesn't have a squared bracket around it, the system will um, think of that as a note type. So say, for example, after placement, we want to add a workflow icon that has um, the note type of, or lights up when it has a note type of outbound call. Cool. All you would need to do is just type in the uh, the note type in here, no brackets or anything like that. If you want to signify to the system that it's anything other than a note type, um, what you will need to do is actually put a bracket around the, the information. So say, for example, we have here submission. So the system knows that um, a submission or a shortlist or however you call that in your system, that's when it lights up and that's what it's related to. If we took those brackets out and saved it, the system will think that it needs to light up when it's a uh, note with the note type of submission. So that's what the brackets are there for. As well as the brackets, you also have the colons. So what they are there to do is to signify that within the action, so in this case submission, unlike here where the system knows okay I light up whenever a submission or a shortlist has been added to that candidate this one will light up when a submission with the status of offer extended has been added so the colon lets the system know what type of action it is so another thing to show is if I removed this the system would light up when any file was added to the candidate record. But if I add formatted resume, it lights up when a file with the file type formatted resume is added to the system. Um, one thing to mention as well, if I were to save my changes and I've added that outbound call, you do like with field mappings or any other system setting, you will need to log out and back in to actually see what those changes are. Um, now, I mentioned that um, not everything can be turned into a workflow icon and there's a couple of, um, and I'll, I'll go through a couple of them in a moment, um, but a couple of good tips and places to look when you're wondering what you can make into a workflow icon. One place is you'll notice under the system setting, there's actually this hint um, and it has the different actions that you can add as a system, as a workflow icon, sorry, and um, what they relate to. Now, I am aware that this is sort of quite a, a thick block of text. So another place that you can look is at 
this um, documentation, which I'll just bring up now. So the documentation, which will be shared around after this webinar, but there's a really useful bit of documentation called understanding workflow system settings. And as we scroll down and you'll notice here that it says associated actions and um, what this shows is this shows what different actions can be changed to system settings and uh, sorry to workflow icons within the system settings and um, what entities that you can add them to uh, so for example tasks you can add against candidates jobs leads opportunities whereas um, let's say submissions or shortlists can be added against candidates companies contacts or jobs so there's a lot of different things that can be made as uh, workflow icons. This is a brilliant resource to look at. Uh, if I'm honest, I still, even though I've been working for Bullhorn for, for many years, I still look at it here as a, a reminder. Um, so it's a really good place to look at. Um, and as I mentioned, that will be, be shared around. Um, so one useful thing um, that can be made into a system setting is um, your tasks so that's really useful um, another way of looking at what can be turned into system settings the way that i often look at it is it's actions that are to do with the hiring process so actions that are to do with the shortlist stages that you have on top of that it's things like notes, tasks, files. So it's things to do with the record um, that that you're related to, that you're looking at, and that are related to the um, the record that you're on. So um, if if you're ever wondering, kind of as a, and this is if you kind of on a without looking really deeply at um, the documentation, the best way to think of it is it's actions to do with the actual shortlist process and then files notes tasks on top of that a few other things as well but that's kind of the most commonly used ones that i would recommend um brilliant so let me just check great so um the other thing that i just wanted to uh mention as well is that um you can also add um so as well as setting up um su submission statuses like before we were looking at and actually i'll go back to the candidate we were looking at submission and the shortlist or submission status which depending on how you have your system set up you might have um a shortlist or submission status that is to do with interviews if you had it set up where it was submission colon first interview that would light up when the shortlist status submission status is changed to first interview however you can also set it up so that um, an appointment with the type the appointment type of first interview is set up um, also as well uh, you if you just put in brackets interview just as it is as actually it's in this system set in this system setting here um, that will highlight when the workflow the workflow icon when um, an interview is scheduled against the record and an appointment is created with the appointment type of interview um, so there's a few different ways that you can set up uh, a workflow icon to light up around interviews and also one thing to bear in mind is whether you want it to be about the appointment record and the appointment record stages or the shortlist stages and depending on that will depend on how you set up that workflow icon. Um, so that was everything that I wanted to show you around the workflow icons. Um, I wanted to make sure there was a few time, a bit of time for questions as well. So um, yeah, Sarah, I'm not sure if there were any questions that had come through. Yep, we've got a couple here. The first one is, can any record use workflow icons? So as you'll kind of notice here in the um, system settings, most 
entity and most record type can um, be used to set up um, or can use workflow icons. So you've got your candidates, your contacts, companies, jobs. Also as well for anyone who uses the enterprise edition of Bullhorn, your leads and opportunities can also use workflow icons as well. Uh, the one entity that you'll notice here isn't showing up and isn't here are the placement records. So placements, you can't have workflow icons against um, them. And the reason for that is in the eyes of Bullhorn ATS, um, the placement is that final stage of the, the hiring process. I know that after that stage, many of you might use onboarding or might have processes after that, but in the eyes of sort of ATS Bullhorn, um, placements is that final stage so you it, you wouldn't need workflow icons from there. Great, thank you. This question says, can statuses be added as a workflow icon? Yes, so these can be added as a workflow icon and actually um, I do have a contact up and um, my contact has a, a workflow icon to do with um, statuses and like with the um, uh, like files or submissions, it would be the same sort of for formatting where we do um, comma, bracket, status, colon, and then the particular status, say new lead, close bracket. That would be how you would set it up. Um, and then it would show up. This one is to do with active because it's to do with a uh, contact. Um, you can either change the status from clicking on there like I mentioned before and this will update it won't give you the option of a drop down because this particular um, workflow icon is related to active statuses um, you can also change the status sort of on your record your status field might be somewhere else but we can change it there too um, and then once that updates um, you'll notice that and I might just have to refresh it um, the the workflow icon lights up. You'll also notice that there's this black bar that says current across the top. Um, so this is one thing that is different about um, the uh, status workflow icons to the other ones is if we were to, ch were to change this back to, to new contact, the workflow icon does stay lit. So it's lit up when the candidate has, or sorry, not the candidate, the record, in this case, contact, um, has had the status that is to do with the workflow icon. However, when it's currently in that status, you then see that current um, banner across the top. Um, so just one thing to bear in mind, once it's been that status, it will stay lit up for forevermore, but the, the current is a, a good place to look. Awesome. Next question says, will these update for specific users or all users? Uh, yes, so because this is within the system settings, it will update for all your users. Um, if you are a company that potentially uses different private labels um, and you have maybe different offices on different private labels, then you can have different system settings, as I'm sure anyone out there that, that uses private labels will know. So in that case, you can set these up differently. But if you just use one private label, everyone's on uh, the same sort of layout, then it would be updated for everyone and the same um, workflow icons for all users. Excellent. Um, just one more question I want to ask here. It says, can you show us how to use the workflow for subsequent interviews? Yes, so for subsequent interviews, that would depend on how you have this set up. Um, so if I go to system settings, the reason I say how it would depend on how you have it set up is in the recruiting activity report or the sales activity report, what is deemed as a subsequent interview is um, an appointment with the appointment type of second, third or final interview. Um, now with workflow icons, these can only be set up for one specific appointment type or one specific task type or one specific status. So depending on your individual system, I don't know how many um, different 
sort of interview stages you have as appointment types, but it would be the case of adding, um, uh, setting up like this. So it would be the bracket appoint, oh, appointment colon, and then uh, let's say second interview. Now, the thing that you would have to make sure is this is spelled and kind of formatted the the same way that you have it. So I've put just second interview, but you might have it written out or yours might just say subsequent interview. Um, so that's that's the thing. It does depend on how you have your appointment types, um, but that would be the way that you, you set it up. There's not a you can't set up a workflow icon for all subsequent interviews. If you have, um, say, for example, like I mentioned, the second second, third, final um, as uh, your appointment types. Excellent, thank you, Jade. So that's it for today's webinar. As a reminder, we will be sharing the webinar recording with all attendees within the next 24 hours, and we'll follow up via email in the next week for any questions that we didn't have time to cover in the Q&A. I also wanted to share that Engage X 2021 is fast approaching and registration is open. So to register for this immersive online conference on June 15th and 16th, visit engage.bullhorn.com. For additional training resources, don't forget to log into the Learning Hub through the customer community at help.bullhorn.com. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.